Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Shifting Gears. Today I'll be going over six things you need to know about the 690 Enduro. In my first list video for the 690, I mentioned some features that I thought were pretty nice. Today I'd like to go into a little more detail about some of the features, as well as potential things buyers might need to be aware of. I might be repeating myself from previous videos, but I just want to drive home some of the facts that are often overlooked or ignored. Jumping right in, let's start with what I feel is the most overlooked feature on the 690, the map switch. The current gen bikes have a map switch right on the handlebars, with the options being street or sport. In street mode, the throttle response is smoother, whereas the sport setting is immediate and snappy. However, on older bikes like mine, the map switch is a lot different. Instead of a button on the handlebars, it's actually a dial under the seat. This dial goes from zero to nine, but it actually only has four settings. Let's start with zero. This is the poor fuel setting. If you can't find premium gas, you can use this to run on regular. However, the manual suggests that you only use this for a single tank. Turning the dial to one is called the soft map. Engine performance is restricted across the board, although not as much as the poor fuel setting. This is meant more for beginners or that friend who wants to ride your bike, but you don't trust them entirely. If you've ever ridden a 690 and thought it didn't have much power, then it was probably in this setting. Position 2 is considered advanced mode. It's the same as sport on the new models, with a snappy throttle and power throughout the entire rev range. Finally, positions 3 through 9 all put the bike in standard mode. This might differ a little from street mode on the new models, but the manual suggests they are the same. The way I can best describe this mode is it's like having VTEC on your bike. The power is nice and smooth, but if you get on the throttle a bit, the bike really wakes up. <laughs> Moving on, the second thing I'd like to discuss is maintenance intervals. Many people like to assume that the 690 is a maintenance queen. However, unlike the 500 EXC, which actually does require a lot of work, the 690 has fairly long intervals. 10,000 kilometers or 6,200 miles between oil changes. That's as good as any vehicle I've owned, two wheels or four. The thing is, changing the oil is a little more complicated than a standard bike. But that's not saying a whole lot. The difference is the 690 has two filters instead of one, and there are two oil screens that can either be cleaned or replaced. It really only adds maybe 10 minutes to the whole process. So no issues there in my opinion. However, I should point out that the manual calls for valve checks at the same intervals as well. This is a little more annoying, but still much better than a 500 EXC or my 450L, which are supposed to be done around 1200 miles. In addition, the 690 has another advantage over regular bikes when it comes to performing valve checks, and that's the fact that the gas tank is part of the subframe. So instead of having to remove the tank to get to your engine, there's simply an airbox. I can't talk about the valves without addressing one of the biggest issues that's kind of tarnished the 690's reputation, the rocker arms. More specifically, the rocker arm bearings. I'm not sure when the issues started exactly, but for a number of years, the 690's rocker arm bearings could fail. The actual problem was hard to diagnose, but it appears that the pins that held the bearings in place could start to walk out, making the bearings unbalanced. This caused excessive wear, which eventually led to failure. There's a shop in Germany that appears to have figured it out. I'll post a link to their video. Just use the closed captions if you don't speak German. Now apparently, the issue was resolved by KTM in the 2015 and newer models. However, KTM has never really acknowledged the issue. Of course, if they did, they might actually have to issue a recall or take care of the owners who've had problems. Just be aware if you're shopping for older models. Either avoid the 2014 and earlier 690s, or make sure that the rockers are replaced with newer pins or assemblies. The latest models have not gone without issue either. The 2018 to 2020 Enduros were actually recalled for failing clutch slave cylinders. By now I'm sure almost all affected bikes have been serviced, but be sure to double check if you're looking to purchase one of those model years. And I know a lot of people like to pile on the hate whenever a company has issues with a product, but this recall was caused by a faulty gasket. 
KTM does not make gaskets. Most of the blame in this case will lie on the part supplier. However, the fact that it took so long for KTM to issue the recall, despite all the customer complaints, reflects poorly on them as a company. I'd say KTM is sort of the apple of the motorsport world, and that they make really cool products, but their business practices leave a lot to be desired. Getting back to the bike, I guess I should mention the frame design. While most dual sports or off-road bikes use cradle frames, the 690 utilizes a trellis design, with the engine being a stressed member. This is most likely a weight saving feature, but what it means for owners is that the engine is just dangling there behind the front tire, like a pair of enormous testicles just waiting to get smacked on a log or some rocks. Therefore, it's imperative that you buy a good skid plate for the 690. The one that it comes with is total garbage. I mean, most factory skid plates are, but without a chonky frame to help protect the motor, it's kind of a bigger deal in this case. Next up is the transmission. I don't consider this a huge issue, but it's still worth mentioning. Just be aware that a common complaint is false neutrals. I've personally hit a false neutral twice in the 500 miles I've ridden since owning the bike. Both times it was between 5th and 6th gear. I probably could have avoided this by simply wearing something other than canvas shoes though. Regardless, it's something that many owners have experienced and it seems to have persisted in the new models as well. There's a Pro Shift kit out there for 110 bucks, and it seems fairly easy to install but it makes me wonder why KTM hasn't resolved this in their newer models. Maybe it's the same reason Kawasaki won't fix the doohickey in the KLR. I don't know the reason. Probably never will. In both cases, it's basically just a heavier spring. And finally, I know this one isn't about KTM or the 690 specifically, but it's something I wish I'd known beforehand. Do not buy from KTM Twins. I know it may be tempting, I mean, they've got tons of stuff in stock, and they only deal in KTM parts. They're also pretty high up in the Google results, but that's because they pay to be there. As for parts, they do not update the availability very often, or at all. Twice I've tried ordering something from them, going through the entire buying process, only to receive an email several days later telling me that one or more of the items was actually out of stock and that they wouldn't be getting more until an undetermined time later in the year. A friend had warned me that they were slow or unreliable but didn't elaborate, and after paying a little more attention to the reviews on their website it all became clear. A lot of products had strangely low ratings, but many of the negative reviews weren't even about the products. They were about people not receiving their orders or waiting insanely long for them to ship. It made me feel better that I wasn't the only one who had this problem, but it makes me wonder what kind of place they're running there. I certainly will not give them any business. I mean, I tried. Twice. But they didn't have what they said they had. At least it's easy to cancel your order. I just sent them an email and they issued a refund by the next day. With all that being said, just go to Rocky Mountain ATV, Revzilla, or literally any other major online motorsports store. They will have pretty much everything you need. They might not have everything that KTM Twins has, but neither does KTM Twins. Well, that's honestly all I have. I can't think of anything else that people need to know other than this bike is fantastic despite a few flaws. But knowing about the potential issues should allow you to avoid them altogether. Either you don't buy a 690 at all, or you know what to look for when you do go get one, and you can take care of any problems preemptively. In my opinion, it's still totally worth it as the bike is loads of fun, and I have peace of mind because I did this research.